So, you know, Elrond's going to start kicking off at the same time as we're drilling Mirage. Again, what's Brunswick? Brunswick is an exploration machine. <music>
I remember that. This is starting to be a big system, right? Now yes. we're finding, you know, mineralization in a lot of different areas. We still have to figure out the boulder train. There's a lot of work to be done. There are a lot of things that are, even to ourselves, unexplained because we haven't spent enough time and we will spend the time that's necessary. Again, we're drilling right now. We've got, you know, two rigs turning. They're doing more exploration, following up. If you remember, we only had done about 60, 70% of the outcrops. So we still had some that were undrilled. We're wrapping that up, making sure everything has at least one hole in there. And then we're going to start expanding from the ones that we had uh, announced in the, the winter, or so I should say the fall campaign the last year. So there's, there's a lot of momentum going forward on that front. And then we're going to step it up. We're going to start a second campaign at another project. We're going to start drilling at Elrond. Yeah. Because we believe in these discoveries and we want to demonstrate the potential. So, you know, Elrond's going to start kicking off at the same time as we're drilling Mirage. Again, what's Brunswick? Brunswick is an exploration machine. That's what we do better than anybody else out there. We want to deliver results. We want to make discoveries. You know, the numbers game, as you know, you had put it. I mean, it, it just makes sense. I mean, look at mathematics. We have so much going on over here. And, you know, I don't think that right now, look, you know, the, the lithium industry, nickel and all says that they, they took a little hit, the spot price. People got a little bit scared. They, they jumped out, you know, abandoned ship. But I mean, I think this is very short term because when I look at what's going on in the market today, it's starting that the sentiment in the market starting to change. I mean, I, this, this has nothing to do with Brunswick, but I'm just trying to put this out yeah, there. Yeah. I'm looking at some companies out there like hollow BMR and all this because they were day, okay. They were day trading stocks and it was us, but I hadn't seen stocks shoot up so high since 2020, 2021. So I see a reversal coming, whether it's in the lithium industry, whether it's in this space, because even the news is starting to reflect that we're starting to see like, demand of evs are growing nothing has changed so i see this um i see this on a very good path the more we keep on going and you're hitting more and more and more look time will tell but for me it's a winning strategy look people forget you know exploration is exactly that junior mining companies are here to do exploration right and if they're not doing it then not saying it's pointless, but they're not responding to what their where their strengths are. And that's our strength at Brunswick, right? It's right there in the title, Brunswick Exploration. You know, we underline that, you know, four times over because we want to put that emphasis there. But to your point, you know, you mentioned, you know, bottoming out the market. I, I think people sort of need to contextualize just how fast the run-up was, you know, it was 18 months, 18 months, the lithium price quintupled. Yeah. Never saw that in copper. You never saw that in nickel, gold, no. silver, no other commodities ever quintupled over an 18-month window. Crazy. So, yeah, it caused a lot of hotness. And it was kind of normal to a certain extent for the market to settle out. I think it's settling out right now because it's it's classic bull bear market in the mining industry, right? Where what's a bear market? Well, you know, there's a bit of apathy. There's a bit of despair. Um, you know, mines are shutting down. Everyone's putting down their projection. Yet time and time and time again, if there's the, you know, if there's always, I used to be an analyst, right? If there's the one time when you should be looking at anything is when everyone is fundamentally moving away from it on no good reasons. To your point, you mentioned, you know, there's still EV demand. We're still seeing all of these plants being built all over the world. We're seeing growing demand on the lithium side. Yeah. And so absolutely. if all of these things are fine and none of these things are changing, then it's, it's a hiccup. It's a classic disconnect. Yeah, between supply and demand, and once things settle back out, then whoop, we get to have that run up again, and that's that's the way I see it, right? Yeah. When I look at a company like Brunswick, 
when I look at the overall markets, when I look at my peers who have themselves great assets and I see what they're trading at and I see what's necessary to meet demand, I was like, look, it's not just Brunswick. Again, I'm biased. I want Brunswick to do well. Yeah. But all these other companies that have fantastic assets, they also need to do well. You know, whether it's Azimut, whether it's Winsome, whether it's Patriot, I don't care. They also need to do well because we need those assets to meet that demand. Correct. And so that's what, you know, when I look at the overall market, you know, to me, this is a little bit of an overreaction. That's fine. Oversold, yeah. whatever term you want to use, yep. it's fine. Yep. But these things have a habit of settling out. You know, people forget when everything goes well, they may not realize that things might be overbought, right? True. And that's, that's fine. That's fine. And they're all acutely aware when it's oversold, but maybe not so much when things are overbought. That's right. That's, that's not an issue, right? The yeah. issue is finding companies, finding assets, finding management teams that are going to stick through all parts of the cycle deliver results through all part of the cycle, do work through all part of the cycle. And that's what Brunswick is going to do. It's going to do work through all parts of the cycle. It's going to deliver results through all part of the cycle, whether it's Mirage, yeah. whether it's Elrond, whether it's Anatakao, or whether it's our huge portfolio that still needs to be prospected. What if I make another three discoveries this year? I'm now up to six, right? No, no. Yeah, it's it's not just... Can't that's it, that's it. the advantage. That's the fun thing. Yeah. Pigeonhole us as much as you want. That's fine. Never hold judgment against that. No. But if we surprise you, well, can't say we didn't warn you. Yeah. You know what? And listen, the, the Gina Reinhardt's out there. No, the big majors are all looking to to buy out. We've seen it. All other lithium companies, of course, they're going to try to go get them on the cheap. I mean, this is, I mean, this is classic, right? And oh, yeah. there's that's why I don't see how you know, especially with all the stuff that you're doing and management that you know you and everybody else that's there, uh, your geos and stuff. I had a little bit of fear, but I was just reading an article the other day out of China saying that, oh, wait a minute, they're going to need more lithium. Oh, what happened with all that sub oversupply supposedly all of a sudden? I mean, now all of a sudden, oh, now China's looking that. Oh, and then I was reading something out, out of France where um, I think it was Macron uh, or. The uh, person in charge of uh, the mining industry was saying, look, uh, and I'll put those uh, down in the links below in the description, saying, look, we're going to probably need to look for Chinese investors. Oh, so look at this. So now maybe the Chinese coming back to come start looking up assets. That is uh, huge. Yeah. And, and it really speaks to, you know, a maybe not a, a panic from from governments the world over, but. Again, there's a disconnect between focusing on downstream application of lithium, which has been quite healthy, all these gigafactories and all these investments and all that growth. Yeah. And in terms of building a resilient supply base, you know, upstream, uh, outside of China's control has been really hard and, you know, exactly. has been a lot slower than governments take for granted. Yeah. And so that's why your Gina Reinhardt blocked out acquisition and said, nope, we're building an industry here because exactly. we're going to be in this for the long term. That's, right. that's why you have so many companies active in Quebec looking to expand their portfolio. I don't, I don't think people realize, you know, just how active Rio Tinto is obviously with it, with its partners, but then you also have groups like Albert Marley, yeah, uh, true. It's investment in uh, in Patriot, but they're also sniffing around claims. They've done, you know, their own staking. You have groups like Cobol, which is the Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates uh, backed vehicle. You have groups like obviously Arcadium, one of the largest lithium producer, heavily active in the province, looking to build mines. Yeah, you know, it's it's crazy when you start to contextualize everything and say something is going on. That's right. And all these companies aren't here for the short term. They want to establish themselves for generations to come yeah. uh, with the assets. And it's companies like Brunswick Exploration that it's going to find the assets uh, that's going to attract these big boys. I completely alongside agree. Alongside Patriot, alongside Winsome, alongside everyone else in, this, in the space. I completely agree. You know what, uh, Killian? Um, thank you so much for being here. I don't know if you have anything else you'd like to say to uh, the investors out there before we wrap this up. 
look, to me, it's simple. Again, expert, right where I started, we're an exploration machine, yes. right? The team, the geos we've, we've built up, um, whether, you know, it's, you know, fresh out of school graduates, people that have been in True. the business a long time, you know, looking at the board, guys like Bob Wares, all of these people have success. They're driven to make new discoveries. They're motivated to make new discoveries. And, you know, every year has been a step up. From 2021, when we were just starting out, staking a couple of things. From 2022, when we started to coalesce our model and grow. 2023, when we started making discoveries. Well, again, what's 2024 going to reserve for us? Uh, big, big. Thank you so much, Killian, for being here today. And uh, naturally, we're going to see you so much uh, for 2024. And I cannot wait for all these results that are going to be coming out soon. My pleasure. Between plays, it's the journey and what you do between where you are and where you want to be. Research, prepare, plan, and execute your strategy. Do your DD and stay strong in visualizing and achieving your goals. Our strategy is unique since 2020. An original concept imitated, never duplicated. Real conversations with media influencers, educational and expert speakers, analysts and consultants. Between Plays, bridging the gap between companies and investors.